hyalinization. It's a form of tissue degeneration that occurs when a tooth suffers a force so heavy that it will get pressed against the alveolar bone. It is characterized by the formation of a clear eosinophilic homogeneous substance. Hyalinization, other than the periodontal ligament, also occurs in other body parts, such as the kidney or the lungs, that is representative of a pathological process and is irreversible. But in case of the periodontal ligament, it's a reversible process and is indicative of the ligament being compressed and locally degenerated. There are some changes observed during the formation of the hyaluronide zones that include the gradual shrinkage of the periodontal ligament fibers, the indistinct cellular structures, the nuclei either being pycnotic or even disappear. This is the one of the first signs of the hyaluronization. There is compressed collagenous fibers that gradually unite into a cell-free mass. There is breakdown of blood vessel walls causing leakage of their contents. And after a period of 20 to 30 30 hours, the osteoclasts, they'll start to get formed. Uh, now, what does this high LNI zone indicate? It's indicative uh, of the fact that the ligament has become non-functional. There is no bone resorption and hence further tooth movement cannot occur, which is why it's essential to remove this high LNI zone that occurs by two mechanisms. One, by the osteoclastic resorption of the alveolar bone, and the other, by the invasion of cells and the blood vessels from the periphery of the compressed zone by which the necrotic tissue is removed. Now, the uh, location and extent of the hyalinized tissue largely depends upon factors such as the nature of tooth movement, the amount of forces applied, and the form and outline of the adjacent bone. Starting from the nature of tooth movement, if we were to produce a tipping kind of tooth movement on the tooth, then the hyalinized area would be seen near the alveolar crest. If we were to bring about tipping with excessive forces, then two areas of hyalinization occur, one in the apical region and the other in the marginal region. And in case of bodily movement of the tooth, uh, the higher nigration can be seen closer to the middle portion of the root. Next is the amount of forces applied. Uh, greater the areas of force, sorry, greater the uh, greater the uh, forces applied, uh, wider will be the areas of hyalinization. For example, if we were to employ light forces, then there would be the formation of the osteoclast uh, that would start to remove the lamina dura and thus tooth movement would begin. And this process is known as the frontal resorption where resorption occurs uh, between the lamina dura and the root. It facilitates the orthodontic tooth movement and hence it is quite favorable. The next is the undermining resorption that occurs when the force that we apply are so heavy that it would cause it would cause the blood vessels of the periodontal ligament to get occluded, hence causing necrosis, and the periodontal ligament would undergo high alanization and hence causing the undermining resorption, known as undermining because uh, resorption occurs from the underside of the lamina dura. Hence, uh, it does not favor the orthodontic tooth movement. And finally, uh, about the form and outline of the adjacent alveolar bone, uh, the areas of bony prominences of the bone have more areas of hyalinization compared to the non-bony prominences. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video is helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our channel. If you have any feedback, please leave it in comment box. We'll try to make better videos in next videos and next chapters. Thank you.